Okay, are we ready? We are ready. Start the second recording. We'll, we'll go up, up and over the barrel to the center where I think I put the plaque. And keep an eye out for a brass plate, rectangular in shape. I think I see a red angle. Go right on the screen. Oh, I think that's it. Oh, I think that's, that's it. it. I see, I, that's it. That's it. Sweet. Dead ahead. All right. There you All go. All right, let's work it. We landed with the sub 30 years ago. Oh, Look at that. Wow. Okay, zoom in on that puppy. Oh, we found it. This is cool, guys. This is okay. very cool. Restarting video. Wicked awesome. What does it say on this on this like, plaque? It's to in memory of the crew that died. All right, team. Continue heading out. There we go. There it is. Okay, I feel good. Oh, there it is. If I'm oriented correctly, I'm looking this. So we are just off the bow, correct? Just, just above okay, the bow right now. Ready to keep coming down. So, yeah, those look like the anchor chains on the bow. Again, seeing lots of those gooseneck barnacles all over. Canberra is a British Royal Navy County class cruiser. They were the equivalent of the Northampton New Orleans class for the Royal Navy. Again, designed to comply with terms of the Washington Naval Treaty. The deck is still pretty intact over here. Looks like she has a forest growing on her deck. I know, it's beautiful. Those are all black corals. I think we're looking at the deck house, okay. now the turret is coming into view. Oh yeah, you can see the little, uh, is that a winch? Are those winches on the front? Possibly. What did you call this, the deck house? Or? Um, I'm not sure, that's actually the top, that's a gun turret. Yeah. Oh, it is, okay. The roof is gone. You can actually oh. see the gun sleet, the breaches. Look at that. Can you yeah. zoom in on that? We're looking at the inside of an actual 8-inch gun turret from World War II. I mean, that's an, an incredible shot right there. You can actually see the, see the range finder, that cylindrical piece behind the gun. Oh, reaches. that's what that is? Okay. Yeah, so the things we saw sticking out the side of the American turrets, that's, that's what would be on the inside, something very similar to that. Wow, this is incredible. Note how tight and cramped these uh, these yeah. gun houses are, and imagine you know multiple men in there, you know, that's wild. handling the ammunition and the powder. It's hard to conceptualize just how massive these are. Look how intricate the mechanisms are for the guns as well. There doesn't seem to be any kind of structural damage to why the turret roof is off. And gun barrels had a, a lifespan of a certain number of charges, and the guns would be replaced with new ones. So the top probably popped off the turret so that they could remove the worn out guns and put the new ones in. Because it looks like it's kind of a clean break and not any sort of jagged wound there. So. Can you zoom in at the center of the rangefinder? Because I think we can actually see where the rangefinder would be looking into it. Yeah. Looks like there's like a data plaque at the top of that. Maybe we can read part of. Something mounting. Pressure. Still down. Still down. <laughs> Who has the best eyesight? Darn my 55 year old eyes. Well, I've got young eyes and I can't see it. <laughs> yeah, I think we got a couple good shots yeah. of that. That's great. Yeah, thanks. Now, we have another request I just to identify the wreck. This is the Royal Australian Navy's cruiser HMAS Canberra, sunk or scuttled actually after a very, very severe damage August 9th, 1942. Canberra was a uh, county class cruiser built in Great Britain. The Australian Navy ordered two ships to the design. Canberra was one, the other was uh, HMAS Australia. And uh, like the American cruisers, the British also have faced the same challenges of trying to save weight to keep the ships under the 10,000 ton limit. Some of the structure is lightly built, so it's, it's probably not surprising to see some of the level of collapsing we're seeing here. Looks like an engine order telegraph. Yeah, yeah it does, actually. I've certainly seen enough of them in, from the, in our collection, so... This is, not like a, this is not a USN ship, so All I'll right. defer to our Australian experts, though. It looks a bit like a uh, engine order telegraph to me. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think that's our consensus now. 
I'm just a simple geophysicist. <laughs> That's what they use from the engine room, huh? To tell the speed or or how fast to turn the engine? Yeah, you can see the astern and your head. Yeah, it looks like it's pointing astern. Astern, yeah. So we're now about three quarters of the way down the hull. Is this the stern? We're coming, we're coming, the stern. we're coming to the stern, yeah. Okay. Usually when I see the names on Royal Navy ships, it's usually attached or near the, on the superstructure. I don't think I've ever noted anything on the transom. Yeah, pre-war photos look like it's got the name on the, uh, on the stern. On the stern, okay. Beautiful shot of, the, of a cruiser stern. <laughs> you would see the name spelled out on one of the, on either side. Where the names I'm going to guess that it's uh, going to be covered over. Oh, is that the name there? I think I think there it is. Yeah, I'm going to move in and then yeah, move in, please. Where are you looking? I don't quite uh, see it. Just below the lasers. Looks like you can see the 33. There's almost. definitely a three there. Yeah, that D is the D is clearing up too. D33. Fortunately, it's not. Uh, it's not super clear. I'd buy, it would be nice to get a nice, pretty shot of that, but I think that's the best we're going to get, guys. Look at the number of shell holes here, boy. We have a question from Jonathan asking if that's a torpedo hole on the port side. It certainly looks like a possible torpedo hole. Or it just punches huh. a hole and doesn't explode? or, or No, now it, now it doesn't. <laughs> or what, this thing down here? Maybe? Down here, I think, is what we're talking yeah. about. Looks like maybe it's just a blue out. Yeah, it's a plate. It's certainly, a plate's come off. Or, hmm. Do we know where the water line would have been? Well, uh, these ships had a very high freeboard. This may be the the paint, the dark to light boot, transition. Yeah, the boot top. There's another shell hole. You know, clearly, that was above the water. I guess it's it's possible for shell to to penetrate below the water line, but probably odds are less. And what are we seeing here? What is? Uh, that's another plate that's come off, yeah. twisted, twisted yeah. down. So is it, it looks like a secondary hull or something, huh? It does look like it's a double hull, but these things weren't double hulled. Were no. no. Huh. Comet, this is Alice, maybe. This is the anti-torpedo bulge. So it detonate on that and not penetrate, huh? I don't know. It was a form of underwater protection, yeah. The ship's designer was kind of a pioneer in a way in developing a, you know, call it torpedo bulges and things that were added to, to British warships a way to give them some underwater protection. John Womack says it, it might stop torpedoes, it won't stop a diving shell. Nope. There are a couple comments about our Australian allies and the U.S. Navy and the Royal Australian Navy fought together and suffered together and shed blood together. And we still commemorate that every year at Arlington Cemetery. And the U.S. Navy never forgot Canberra. You know, after this ship was lost, the U.S. Navy changed the name of a, uh, a heavy cruiser under construction at Bethlehem Steel in Quincy, Massachusetts, from Pittsburgh to Canberra to honor the sacrifice and strengthen our ties with our Australian allies. I've always thought it was a very nice gesture to uh, honor the tradition and the historical alliance we have with Australia. Wow. I was thinking it looked like a cross. <laughs> yeah. Kind of a touching image for a, a war memorial. Yeah. 